<laughs> Saturday Night Live uh, had a good one a little while ago. They said, Vladimir Putin is fighting cancer. And for the first time, I'm rooting for the cancer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's bad, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, it was reported that cancer has Vladimir Putin. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the Putin jokes are starting. Uh, <laughs> Just Putin it out there. Uh-huh. Putin on the Ritz. Putin on the Ritz. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. What's new this week? That's the idea, isn't it? Yeah. Discussing. So the first thing is good news. I'm excited about this first one. All right. Honestly. And not in the way that you listeners think I'm excited. No, not yeah. This is this is a avoiding prosecution excited, not the world is burning excited. Well, congratulations, Dwayne. <laughs> right? What'd you do to celebrate? Woohoo! I hacked a couple <laughs> sites. <laughs> this this story feels obvious, but for those of you who don't know that the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act (CFAA) has been around for a while, and it's fairly vague. Mm. I believe Mr. Morris was the first one charged with that. Robert Tappan him, Morris. Robert Tappan Morris with the first. With worm. the Morris worm. Yeah, 19, mm-hmm. I don't know, 82 or whatever. It was. So the headline reads, U.S. Department of Justice will no longer prosecute good faith hackers. Woohoo! So, you know, I think it's a hacker's dream that they're going to hack, hack, hack and do all sorts of weird things. And then some company's going to get wind of it and offer them a job. Right. Right. I mean, it, it's kind of like the, the, the teenage hacker script kitty's dream, isn't it? This is to protect the, the, the actual, you know, people who are trying to do good, the good Samaritan law. The, right. the problem is, so for example, uh, let's say, you know, we, we find a Google dork out on the internet, mm-hmm. which is just mm-hmm. a, a search, a web search that produces uh, vulnerable results. You can do also do a showdown search. Dwayne's mentioned several times yeah. and you find a system in your state that's vulnerable, that's owned, operated by a nonprofit or by the government. Mm-hmm. Uh, before this statement, you weren't sure whether the feds would prosecute you for double. You know, remember that guy in, um, I think it was, it was in Mississippi. Yes. Who, who pointed out that, that one of their websites had a flaw. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. It was a, yeah. this was a guy who pointed out that there was a flaw in the system and a politician went after him. Yeah. Government went yeah. after him. I think this might be a result of that kind of thing. And the governor, the yeah. governor wanted them yeah. to go after. Now, this doesn't protect yeah. you from state prosecution. That still could happen. But the feds aren't going to be coming after you if right. you're if you're trying to do good. If you're if you're obviously Sweet. trying to help the security of the system, and you're not, you know, if you, if you if you steal the information, if you use the identities that you find, if uh, any of the things that are we would consider a crime are still crimes. But but okay. discovering a vulnerability and then re- divulging it to the people who. Um, who have it is no longer a crime. So, all right, Dwayne. So it's time for what career criminal advice? <laughs> hacker advice. Hacker I know what advice. you're going to say. Yeah. So, how would you get around this? Would you try to <laughs> disguise yourself as doing something good, maybe like wolf in sheep's clothing kind of thing? Well, see, listen. If you were to breach those sites and get all that data, uh, no. I, honestly, so as a random example, just like not related to reality. But Patrick and Carl, if we were to say a hacker were to find a Google dork Mm -hmm. that then found access to a government website Mm -hmm. that they could then see all of the users and credit card information for users who who were purchasing a particular thing on that site. Right. And then they happened to call that government agency and that government agency said, what were you doing on our site? Um, Mm -hmm. Now we would have some reason we could say uh, it's okay. We're good faith. Well, and again, it's the feds that said they wouldn't prosecute you. The states never said that. So you still need to be aware of the laws in the states. All right. Then I'll hold on. Yeah. Never mind. The ununited states of America. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I yeah. think this is – honestly, I think this is a step in the, the right direction because from the hacker community for the last, I don't know, 20 years, um, it's – Carl, you joke about like the script kiddies going, oh, I'm going to hack into like uh, some – you know, into NASA – uh, right. and get offered a job to, you know, secure right. it. And, and more often than not, what's happened in the, in the past is mm-hmm. if you hack into NASA or you hack into some government agency or you hack into some bank or whatever, you get prosecuted. You like, go to jail. Yeah, exactly. There's like, there's very, 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 very few stories of a hacker breaking into a place and then getting offered a job from that place. It just doesn't yeah, happen. That's not like, how it works. That's the movies right. in the real world. 
they offer to put you in a, a five by five cell for the rest of your life because you decided to show them how bad their security was. And if you do your time, then maybe you can uh, even, emerge. Honestly, though, even then, I think it's rare. Mit- Mitnick's the one that I is. The, Mitnick's done it. Yes. It's the exception of the rule. Right. Well, I also think, you know, someone like Paula Janiskiewicz, who did that famous interview when she was interviewed, waiting in the reception yeah. area and asked if she could get on their Wi-Fi to check her email. By the time she got to the interview, she gave all the she, secrets they, to their databases. They, 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 and they could have had her arrested on the spot. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, and uh, I don't think she was in the United States when she did that. Okay. So it's so career it's, advice. Don't do that. <laughs> or if you're going to do that, make sure they well, can't find you. There's plenty of open platforms you can hack, like Hack the Box and things like that. Yeah, right. Yep. So there's no need to to go after live systems and, and put your liberty Wait, at risk. Wait, but that being said, there are a lot of us you know, security-minded experts who from time to time will find issues on sites that we are not engaged in attacking. And this mm. gives you cover. And this gives us cover, right? There are plenty of times that I will try and anonymously route a message to an organization to let them know that they have an exploit, but I have to cover my tracks very much so that, it, that these things don't happen. So honestly, I think this will help. You know, I wonder if now this gives us an avenue, and I'm not a lawyer, nor do I play one on TV. Uh, I wonder if this gives us an avenue now that we didn't have before. So for example, let's say, uh, we found it, uh, it wasn't in Mississippi. Let's say that we found it on a healthcare site in Mississippi and we wanted to notify them. Mm-hmm. Now you could just notify the press and it yeah. wouldn't be a leak if the press went and then notified the people. Then again, they'd probably publish it. Instead. I don't know. So hmm. I don't know. Cause you and I know of that site that we know. Yeah. 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 That I don't know that we would talk about, but yeah, we if I were to put it. that in the press, they would not be very happy. You know, no, this is a good true. teachable moment. That article mentioned white hat hackers. Mm. And, and I don't think we've really ever defined what the different colors of hats mean good guys. in the hacker world. So the white hat, white hats are good guys, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a vague system and it depends on the context, but for the most part, white hat means good guys, right. uh, red hat means well, good guys acting like bad guys like for hire like you guys yeah blue hat means good guys defending blue hat means good guys defending yeah right okay and and purple hat is is guys who are in the middle who attack and defend i thought purple hats were reserved for 50 year old ladies who <laughs> <laughs> not anymore carl not anymore no. all right so wait a minute so white hat good guys yes uh red hat good guys for hire pen testers like you guys Right. Right. Well, yeah, yeah, but 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 posing is the bad guys. The the red a red team is a group that attacks. That's what we do. Right? Yeah. So we'll come but in and attack. We act. But like everybody knows cats. you're going to try to attack. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not then, like you're doing anything nefarious. So it's red versus blue. So there's a blue team on the other side oh, that's trying to detect us yeah. and defend. Oh, is that what red versus blue is all about? Like Halo? <laughs> I mean, it, it originally comes from the military, but yes. Okay. All right, so blue hats are good guys defending a red hat attack, and then purple is what? Somebody plays both sides. Purple is is people who are on both sides, so people who know how to attack oh. and also know how to defend and, and work both sides. And then black hat is just pure evil. Black hat's supposed to be pure evil, which is an interesting term because the biggest security conference is black hat. But So I, I think the whole purple thing is just insecurity of hackers worrying they'll be pigeonholed when it's it's really it's just not a thing. Most people don't play a purple role in a, in a red uh, red versus blue scenario. Hey, hey, Patrick. Yeah. Did Did you notice that Dwayne's wearing a black hat? I <laughs> I got to forget. I got to take that off when I put cameras on. Sorry. <laughs> uh, you know, I I interestingly enough, there's a lot of um, drive in the industry to change the colors too. Um, to not but, be colors anymore, not be black hat and red hat and blue okay. hat and purple hat, but to be, you're the adversary emulation team. Is it because colors are offensive by nature? I, I think so. I don't know. I think it's the George Carlin thing about post-traumatic stress disorder. We just get yeah. longer and longer names for things. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, numbers, no. Names, no. No. Colors, no. You know, what's left? Food. Food. 
I want to be on the I want to pizza pizza hat. (laughs) I'd like to be (laughs) on the candy bar team. (laughs) Uh, Krispy Kreme hat. (laughs) Oh my god! Yes. (laughs) Wait a minute! I thought we were talking about food here. (laughs) (laughs) Ribeye hat. I mean, right. it, 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 attempts to change the way people refer to things are are usually doomed. Yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah. yeah, it's blown against the wind. Yep. All right, what's next, guys? What's Pi Pi? Pi Pi. Um, so, for any of you who have programmed in Python, um, obviously there's a bazillion libraries out there that you can pull in, just like any other any programming language. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure you know Carl is your programming in Blazor and all the other languages uh, and, and platforms you're in. Language, my right, friend. Right. So you have C Sharp, and you can pull in a lot of I'd assume libraries that you could use that weren't developed by you that are out on some repo somewhere. Well, right. PyPy is a simple way to have a sort of global repository. So if you want to interact with say discord, there's a package for discord and you can create a chat. You get for Python. Exactly. Yep. All right. Um, But being that it is kind of an open source thing where you could, anybody could submit a package um, right. There are people, obviously, who submit malicious packages. So in this particular case, the package that was sub- submitted was the PyMafka package, so P-Y-M-A-F-K-A package, which is very close to the legitimate library in PyPy called PyKafka. Which oh. is an which is an Apache library. It gives you a a giant cockroach. <laughs> Cockroaches. Um, so the thing here is they're typo squatting on a library name. You happen yeah. to type in the wrong name, you're going to get this Pi Mafka as opposed to Pi Kafka. It reminds me of the um, nefarious taxi drivers in Bulgaria. Oh, Have yeah? either of you guys experienced this? No, I've never been to Bulgaria. Well, so there there's taxi drivers that are legitimate. But the, by law, they're required to post their fares uh, in graphics on the on the um, on the taxi, right? Oh. And then there are others that are nefarious. They basically go up a decimal point, so it's t- ten times what oh. everybody else is. But you don't see it because wow. the graphics are deceptive in the yep. way that they are. And so I got in a cab from the airport when I was going to a hotel to speak at a conference there many years ago. And the guy says, you know, it was going to be like, I don't know, $70 US when normally it would be like, you know, seven. Wow. I said, that's outrageous. I'm not paying. And he says, well, then we will wait for the police. And apparently you have no case because the number is is posted, not clearly, and it's misleading. But yes. Yeah. It's the same same type of thing here. If you're, you know... Developing your application and you wanted the the Pi Kafka and you happen to type it wrong and you click on Pi Mafka and you install it mm. and use it. What this will do is install a Cobalt Strike backdoor. Wow. Um, so Cobalt Strike is a big C2, um, so command and control structure, um, that's designed literally to deploy all sorts of malicious things to your systems. It's typically supposed to be used by white hats uh, and red hats, although we're finding... It's a legitimate software. Is it? Uh, we're finding, I think, more black hats use it than anybody else. But All right. So what the thing says uh, is it opens backdoors on Windows, Linux, and Macs. So unlike an attack from the outside, this is something that the user of that machine will install, not knowing Correct. that it is opening the computer for business. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and honestly, I mean, this is, a, this is a great lesson to A... Don't install libraries from open source or even packages or NuGet or whatever if you don't know what they do. Right, and you don't trust them. Yeah, this particular package when you go when you go to a you know a NuGet package or you go to a PyPy package, whatever. There's a description as to what the package does. There's a website. There's a wiki. Usually, there's documentation. And there's, there's source code. Right, and there's source code for you to read. This had none of that. Literally, like it was a blank package page. Yeah, but even if it did. It could be a copy of the legitimate sure. Kafka yep. stuff. So you need to really verify like how long it's been there. And what the we're starting is. to get into the phase of it's like phishing mail. We can't rely on phishing mail to be obviously stupid anymore. And and we, the obvious thing to do is is Google the name or Bing the name or whatever, yes. you know, and see what people are saying about it. Because if somebody gets screwed, they're going to complain online somewhere. Oh, yeah. 
Yep. Yeah. Hopefully. Or if there's no results, you know it's not the one you've been told yeah. is fantastic because it has no record. Right. Hmm. More social engineering. Woo-hoo. It's all social engineering. Everything is social yeah. engineering. It mm. all comes down to deceiving in some way or, or hiding. It all comes down to social. They say that all combat is is deception. Really? All warfare is deception. Wow. Huh. Who said that? I did. No. Joe, Joe <laughs> Sue. I just did. Isn't your mic on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, it's, uh, I, I don't know who said it. It might, it might actually be from Sun Tzu, but um, it's definitely an old adage. Lao that, Tzu? Uh, was, was that Art of War, Lao Tzu? Yes. Uh, I, I can't know. believe I know that. With Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu, not Lao Tzu. Yeah. Lao Tzu is the, uh, the Taoist. That's his older oh, brother. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Sun Tzu, the art of war. Yes. <laughs> the Zoo okay. Boys. I, the Zoo I Boys. Sit. The Zoo Crew. It's, yeah, it's his brother. <laughs> <laughs> one is the art of war, and the other one is about Taoism, like the most peaceful religion in the world. Yeah, right? <laughs> So that dinner table must have been interesting. Separated at birth. <laughs> it's like twins. Did you see that movie? Yes. Uh, Danny yeah. DeVito and yeah. Yeah. But actually Sue is the first name, isn't it? And yeah, so it's like, you know, Joe Smith and Joe Stalin. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> right. Actually, that works, doesn't it? Joseph Smith and Joseph Yeah, Stalin. that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, enough of that. Let's talk about Russia because we haven't talked about Russia right. except to joke in, around in about minutes. Putin. Right. They haven't they haven't been in the news at all. No. no. Um so, so anonymous is uh, obviously very anti-Russian and they have uh reported to have taken down satellites and TV stations and things, but they uh declared cyber war on a pro-Russian hacker gang called Killnet. Mm. So what happened here? What's Killnet? Yeah, so um, Kil- Kilnet is a um, – they're very much a Russian or support Russian uh, – the Russian invasion in Ukraine and all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and they've, they've – what's interesting is they've been attacking um, – obviously not Ukraine, but they've been attacking a lot of other sites like – um, yeah, a lot of EU sites, Italy, a lot of, Italy. Uh, a lot of the government ministries there. Um, mm-hmm. So Anonymous finally just opened up and said, listen, we've declared a cyber war, which is – which is weird because I I don't know that I've ever seen anybody officially say we've declared a cyber war. You, sh- you just attack them. It's like guerrilla yeah, warfare, right. right? And this is almost like a you know like anonymous is some sort of nation state and said, hey, listen, we're we're declaring war. In some I, if sort I was of, anonymous, I wouldn't declare anything. I just hack. Right? Yeah. Why are they declaring things? It's not very anonymous. That's if you kind of well, maybe it probably hubris. Probably helps their recruiting if they get the street cred for that stuff. Well, maybe you're right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's interesting. Maybe I, they're hoping yeah. to get sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> Anonymous sponsor, sponsored by <laughs> Hack the Box. The Legion of Doom. <laughs> <laughs> sponsored by Security This Week. Doo-doo. So if you go to a hacker convention, do their name tags like all read like Salty Spider and, you know, <laughs> uh, depends big on the bollocks level. and... Yeah, it depends on which conference. I think some of them, yeah, you use, you use uh, handles. And then in others, you use your name. And Defcon's probably more a handle place. Dwayne, RSA, what's your more of a, a, a business and title. Dwayne, right. what's your handle? What's my handle? I got two. Yeah. Well, it? I got two that I could tell you about. Don't say it. Oh, you have two? <laughs> I have two. <laughs> Patrick, what's They call yours? him Mr. Tibbs. <laughs> Shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, you know what's funny? is my So my handle is, uh, one of my handles is Ono Sunday. And, and a lot of people, when I'm, when I'm in the hacker groups or whatnot, always think that that means I'm of Asian descent of some sort, which if you've ever seen oh. a picture of me, I'm as, about as far away from an Asian descent as possible. You're as white as a Ritz cracker. <laughs> right? <laughs> French Canadian. Uh, yeah, not very. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but needless to say, a Ono Sendai is actually a term that came out of a William Gibson book. And it was the name of a computer hacking deck. So there's your esoteric knowledge of, of hacking. My uh, hacker name, I just changed it. It's Amakase. Which means when you go to a sushi restaurant, whatever the chef suggests. Oh, is that is that true? Is that what that means? Yeah. Oh, shoot. Yep. Now I got to remember. It's kind of like John Panette. Feed me. I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> Some off um, All right. So anyway, and I know Patrick's is Tomahawk Boy. All yeah, right. So anyway. Uh, <laughs> Fire. <laughs> 
Fire, fire. fire. <laughs> uh. All right. Do we have anything else to say except that, you know, kill net bad anonymous appears to be good. So if, if you, if you look at some of the dystopian future books and stuff, mm. uh, these non-governmental organizations, non-governmental organizations usually means like doctors without borders and Greenpeace. Yeah. Now right. it's starting to mean criminal, criminal mm. hacking gangs and hacktivist gangs. Yeah. And and so these things start are actually existing now. They they actually have agendas. They have political um, values. Some people hmm. will call them terrorists. Some of them will call them freedom fighters. Some of them will right. call them, you know, irrelevant. But but this is a new paradigm that but anonymous is actually doing things that are affecting geopolitics. Right. And I think that's the story. That's the big deal. Yeah. Now, you, dear listener, probably don't need to worry about it. Unless you're actually in Anonymous or in KillNet, then you need to worry about it. But other than that, the other thing I want to point out is when these large-scale cyber wars go on, Mm -hmm. it's damn near impossible, and I know this from our ops, it's damn near impossible to keep your cyber weapons contained to one target. Mm. So that would be my other sort of... Uh, yeah, advice to the listener would be just when these types of things are flaring up and you have two massive hacker groups going at it, be careful because the fallout may be, you know, cobalt strike beacons getting thrown all over the strip, all over the place or additional phishing emails or people trying to steal your account so they can use that to send an email to anonymous mm-hmm. or whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. Just be more cognizant. Well, and, and I really I, I don't I don't we don't have any reason to believe that anonymous wouldn't trample innocent um, systems sure. to, to use to, to mask their location, their affiliation, that kind of thing. So I'm mm. sure they're hacking systems and using them as bases of operations as much as the others are. Right. It's just mm. the different, they're different goals. That's all. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Now, if I was going to rewrite the headline for this next story, I would, I would say General Motors get stuffed up. <laughs> Getting stuffed. Um, you know, I, I love how in the security world we try and make everything sound as fancy as possible. So the, the oh, title yeah. of this is actually General Motors Credential Stuffing Attack Exposes Car Owner Info. Um, so credential stuffing, let me unpack this because it's super complicated. Mm. Um, it's you've used a username and password. It got mm-hmm. leaked on the dark web and somebody decided to use it. That's it. Hmm. There's credentials. It's credential <laughs> stuffing. So... <laughs> right with all the fixins. <laughs> right right so it's not a super complicated attack um so is this what you were talking about before when you said you could take a hash of somebody's password and stuff it into uh a, a login page or a log uh that's so that's a great question um kind of but not really um so let me let me let me let me t- explain that a little bit Okay. Um, so if I had a hash of someone's password, which um, we had talked about, it's just a crypt- cryptographic representation of their password. Um, it's right. a one-way one-way algorithm. Can't to decrypt take. it. Yeah, exactly. You can only um, compare the hashes of two. So if yeah. I take that hash, um, systems won't typically take that hash as a password, although Windows does, and that's a whole other different story. That's what we were talking about before, was using the hash literally as your credential. Yeah, okay. Um, but if you were to then find that hash, let's say in a dump, uh, you know, on the dark web. Um, so let's say, uh, you know, we all shop at mylocalhardwarestore.com and mylocalhardwarestore.com. Gets... There you go. Yes. We're all shopping there. <laughs> Did they sell lasers for my shark? Uh, so let's say we all shop there. And for some reason, that particular site gets breached and the usernames and passwords in there get leaked out onto the dark web. Yeah. Now, um, credential stuffing would be somebody takes that list of usernames and passwords from Joe's shark cages.com discount shark Disc- cages, <laughs> not those full price cages. You never want to pay full price for a shark cage. Uh, listen, if I'm diving, you? Maybe <laughs> you do. Say, yeah, if I'm diving with sharks, I want the most expensive. Yes, Dwayne. And that's ever. why it's funny. <laughs> Thank you. Way to murder the joke. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, dear listener, <laughs> so you take those, if we were to breach that site, take the usernames and passwords we find, they make it out on the dark web, and then use that against General Motors, right? Because maybe Carl has a Cadillac, Patrick has a Buick, right? I know it. 
So we could use those passwords. That's credential stuffing. It's just using pa usernames and passwords, valid okay. usernames and passwords from other sites onto GM site. All right. So this attack, basically, what did it do? Did it, did it just try to log on as all these different people and get their info? Is that it? It did. Well, I think the primary goal of the attack is GM has a rewards point system. So when you, you have reward points, you can spend on, I don't know, oil changes and air mm. fresheners and whatever. And, and kind of like you're like, if you had a chase car or whatever, you get these points that you can spend on things. Well, right. so they would log in as you and then spend those points on uh, Visa cards and MasterCard gift cards. Oh. Um, and now all of your points have been spent. That gift card was sent somewhere else. Hmm. Um, the, you know, the downside is you also, your first name, last name, personal email address, personal address, uh, username, password, or username, mm -hmm. uh, phone number, that sort of stuff was also on the site. So there was some information leak, but I don't think that was the primary, primary reason. Mm. Uh, the other thing that was interesting is, you know what else is on that site? Um, most of these cars now come with Wi-Fi. And your Wi-Fi password for your car is on the site. Wait a minute, what? So they come yeah. with a Wi-Fi, like a modem? Yeah, yeah. Most of your cars now, you can get a Wi-Fi hotspot built into the car, hmm. and it will have a Wi-Fi hotspot that you can connect through. And Because it's stuff. too much trouble to actually get the one you want at the <laughs> AT&T store or the Verizon store. Right, so now it's just built, it's just built right into your car. Yeah. Um, but those passwords were also uh, in on the website. So somebody could... You know, I guess use your hotspot in your car. Mm -hmm. I suppose. Um, yeah. So yeah. Interesting well, you attack. know, thank God I have a Honda. So uh, <laughs> if you have a GM car, you might have gotten an email from them, right? Yeah, exactly. Telling you, hey, listen, go change your password. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, the GM site does not support two-factor authentication. <laughs> 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 um, of course, they don't. That's why they got breached. <laughs> right. So maybe that will be coming to a GM site uh, near you soon. And GM says they'll be restoring rewards points for all customers affected by the breach. So taking one for the team. There you go. Yep. Uh, for the the downside of not implementing 2FA. Right. Awesome. All right. What's next, man? This one's great. <laughs> is it awesome? <laughs> this is awesome. This is awesome. All right. So I don't know how many of you have. Everybody, everybody has a webcam. Right. And and I know I cover my webcam uh, with a professional cover. Um, actually, when we go to conferences, <laughs> as Patrick covers his with his thumb, as we go to conferences, that's actually one of the little frou-frou things we give away. Little mm -hmm. uh, swag items is, is camera covers. Or yeah, those yeah. little sliding camera with covers. With our logo on it. With our logo on it. So you're always staring at Pulsar Security. <laughs> Um, so what's interesting is that, you know, the, the, the fear has always been someone could spin up your webcam and see stuff, right? Um, and that's exactly what this is. So Screencastify is a plugin for Chrome that gives you the ability to cast your screen. So you can, you can actually show people what's on your screen and it'll record video as well. You can record through the webcam, hmm. um, which sounds great, I guess. Um, mm. But the problem is there's an exploit in that particular plugin, uh, mm. what's known as an XSS or cross-site scripting exploit right. that allows someone to send you a link. And if you click on it, they not only can get access to your camera and force it to do recording anytime they want without notification through the browser, but they also have the ability to have access to your what's called dedicated OAuth or authentication token to your oh, no. Gmail drive because oh, no. the plugin requires access to the Gmail drive. Jeez. What could go um, wrong? What could you go wrong? Um, so not only can they tell your camera to record and then the place that it records to is Gmail, and they also have access to your G drive um, to get access to those videos. So yeah, there's uh, there's a whole lot to unravel here. Um, and wow. sites like uh, Screencastify, of course, um, you know, there's a status Screencastify, quote Screencastify, go Screencastify, learn Screencastify. These are all different sites that, uh, according to this article, still have issues. So there, are, just be careful if you see that as a plugin in your Chrome browser. Make sure it's up to date. I'm afraid if uh, anybody got access to my webcam, they would see me looking at my screen with my eyes crossed. 
Just writing code. <laughs> the puzzled look That's all my day long. Saver. Puzzled look on my face. Yeah. <laughs> That's Bart what I like to do. Is just stare at Carl all day long. The, what? How did? <laughs> what in the what? The what? Cap. All right. Mm. Multiple governments are buying Android Zero Days for spying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we've talked about this before, where there is a market for hacks for zero zero days a, a, a zero day again is an unknown hack something that hasn't been exposed right it, it doesn't mean someone it's new it might have been in the software for 10 years right. we've seen that before right but it's unknown it's unreported it's unpatched so that makes right. it very valuable well there's marketplaces out there on what we would call the dark web where you can buy those things and we're seeing activity where governments are actually making purchases especially of Android platform stuff. These are the hackers that decided not to go to Pwn to own but right. instead <sighs> yeah not go for $100,000 but go for a million, million dollars. Right. So it's fu- it's funny though because you have three markets, right? You have the hackers who are like, "Hey, we're going to show how great we are, and we're going to earn a little bit of cash." And they go to Pwn to own, and they sell it actually back to the vendor. And then you have the other hackers who go, "No, no, no, no we're not going to do that. We're going to sell it to governments for millions of dollars." And then you have the other hackers who go, "We're not going to sell it to any of those people. We're going to sell it to whoever pays us the most." Criminals. Which yeah, which may be criminals, which may be terrorists, or it might be governments. Who knows? Right at that point. All sorts of markets. Hard to distinguish. <laughs> right. Career advice, shop your goods. Career advice, sell it to all three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think you end up dead by the governments. Uh, oh, the my God. You, know, you don't know who you're running from at that point. <laughs> That's the plot of a Blacklist episode. I think it is. Oh, my God. Such a great, such a great show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, not, mu- not much more to say about that. I mean, there's not much you can do. It's not an actionable story. It's really about knowing that the nature of the markets and, yeah. and how the, what, what a zero day means, where it comes from. Um, Re- there's, reboot there's your Android really, phone every day. Yeah, but um, it, it also means that – so one of the things that we stress all the time is patching. You, you need to patch. Right. If everyone patched, would it make a huge difference? Yeah, it would make a huge difference. It's probably the number one thing you can do. The next thing would be to limit the attack surface. Yeah. Because a house made of glass is a lot easier to break into than one with no windows or doors on the first floor. Right. Uh, so you, it's about, you know, limiting. If things don't need to be of, available over the internet or on a wireless network, don't, don't enable them that way. Right. And so attack surface is the next. And the thing about these zero days is attack surface is the thing that's going to save you in a zero day. You know, when somebody comes after you with a zero day, Patching won't, but patching will save you from almost everything else. Right. Well, and common sense too. I think. Like, I'll tell you a, st- a story from my own let's, personal. Let's not tell people to have what they can't get. <laughs> oh, that's so hurtful. No, no, no. I'll tell you. I'll tell you a story from my personal life. Like, my, um, this just uh, day before yesterday, my wife went to log into our bank on our phone, on her phone, um, and she has an Android phone, and uh, she she decided not to. And I was like, "What's up?" And she said, "My phone is acting really slow. It's mm-hmm. possible there's malware on here." No, nope, mm. not going to do it. <laughs> she decided. Wow. She decided to go use your laptop. I was super proud. I'm just saying, that was great. It was impressive. Yeah, that you, is you've made impressive. her intimidated by yeah, technology. or paranoid by anything that, that is technology <laughs> at all. Yeah, yeah. You know, I um, ever since I stopped going to getyourmalwarehere.com, um, <laughs> my phone has been very nicely clean. Your battery life has been excellent. Good. Battery yeah, life is awesome. great. Awesome. Yeah. Once a yeah. week reboots, people. Once a week. I would do it every day, man. Okay. Why not? I, it only takes a minute. Yep. Yeah. It's not a yeah. bad idea. Yep. You do it. Go get a cup of coffee when you come back. It's rebooted. All right. So the last one is about the Federal Trade Commission. Mm. Is it? And Twitter. I guess they're fining Twitter for $150 million for using two factor authentication info. For targeted advertising. Those bastards. <laughs> I knew you I've never so. heard of any <laughs> such any such thing. Doesn't uh, isn't Twitter? everybody use data for advertising? I, I, isn't that I, what the I, I actually was surprised by this one myself. I'm like, oh, that's not allowed. Yeah. yeah. No, well, okay. So it's like it's like it if somebody like wait, a party wait. foul. No, 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 not at all. I don't think so. Honestly, I think this is this absolutely was something that shouldn't be done. If we were to let's say Twitter mm-hmm. were to take all of the users' passwords 
that people put into Twitter. Yeah. And then use those to do analytics on what the what the worst passwords are and that sort of stuff. And then use that to break in other sites. We'd be like, oh, my God, that's absurd. You shouldn't do that. Yeah, yeah, of right? course. Um, so I think there's certain information we give Twitter, like our password, our private information, our 2FA. like Security questions. Right. Security questions. That, that should not be mined. You can't. You shouldn't be so, using uh, that. They got emails uh, for everybody who has Calico cats. Right. For example, and they were peddling cat chow. Yep. Whatever. Yep. Yeah, and Twitter yeah, exactly. So Twitter could say, uh, oh hey, we know that your uh your phone number that you use for, for two um two FA um is out of uh I don't know, yeah, uh, Connecticut Canada and whatever. Right, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And they start targeting you based on that. And I think that's that's not that's not. Oh, uh, yeah. OK. Based on location. That makes sense. Right. But, you know, but if you're also posting cat pictures, they might send you some uh, kitty litter. That's OK. Like, I see that. I think that's fine because you've publicly said. Yeah. This is something I enjoy. You're so right. Twitter you're right. profile you, you on you that. You can expect fine. that. Yes. Right. But it, but it would be terrible if I went to my doctor and I was like, hey, here are some of my security concerns or my uh, health concerns. And then my doctor goes to some drug company, goes, hey, Dwayne's really worried about these things. Why don't you go send him an email about, you know. <laughs> Catheters. Right, exactly. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Catheter. Hey, now I want to go making, back to see what my health concern he's was. He's making plans for the future. <laughs> <laughs> Your How many future things are catheters the bed. answer? <laughs> Patrick. <laughs> this is probably a small list. Uh, so I could see that that's a breach of trust, though, because yeah, it's like sure. I talked to them about something that shouldn't have been shouldn't have been public, and they went and sold that data. Right, yeah, that I get that. In some way. So, so um, here's a question that I'm dying to know: What do you guys think about the reports about uh, people's phones listening when they shouldn't be listening, and then all of a sudden you could start getting ads for what you were talking to your friends about? Ooh. Is that a thing, or is that coincidence? Okay, so I would like to break that into two parts. People's phones listening when they shouldn't be listening is absolutely a thing. And, and the zero days we just talked about from the government agencies can do that now. Um, right. The Pegasus uh, yeah. NCC group exploit can do that now. But I mean, I mean, is Facebook doing that to send me ads? I would like to think no. <laughs> um, but I can tell you that there was, what was the name of the bill? There was a bill that was overturned mm -hmm. um, where ISPs couldn't use your search data mm -hmm. to then sell that for advertising. Because imagine everything at your ISP, when you search for stuff at your house, it all comes through your ISP. Yeah. So imagine now, um, you know, you're looking to go on a camping trip, mm -hmm. right? And you start researching uh, campers mm -hmm. or whatever. And now you start seeing tons of ads for hiking boots and that right. sort of stuff. It's not uncommon for that to be your ISP whether it's Cox or Xfinity or whoever saying, oh, they're looking for these camper things. Yeah. Hey, I know that this house specifically well, is looking for camper things. Let's send them more ads there. And that's probably the link because if you have an assistant like Alexa or any of those other things, Shh, don't say that word. they make, they do web searches. Yeah, that's right. And that is also probably something that you can see in the, in the, uh, the data. So I have Comcast, for example, no knowledge that Comcast does this, but I also have some of the, um, assistants, you know, the, mm -hmm. the virtual assistant stuff. If I were to tell a virtual assistant to, Hey, uh, you know, what's the price of, well, where's the nearest place I can buy this? It's not a stretch. If my ISP is selling that information that mm -hmm. they're going to know, and it's going to start showing up in my browsers. Right. Yep. My so it's not necessarily your phone. Your phone is probably the most secure piece of technology in your life. Yeah, except for the fact that the government can listen to you whenever they want. Like, uh, well, there's that. Remember, that story was specifically about Androids. And Dwayne oh, yeah. and I have been fairly clear that we use iPhones for a reason. They're harder yeah. to get into. The last iPhone uh, exploit that was for sale on the black market was selling for $2.7 They're not common. I guess you could do, a, you could do a, a test, right? And I had tried this before and it didn't work. You, you just put the phone in the middle of two people and you have a conversation, but you bring up stuff that's completely outrageous, like completely not on anyone's radar. Like, uh, I need to buy a bag of concrete tomorrow. Yeah. You know, a bag of concrete. How, how often does that come up? And then, you know, the next day, go look on Twitter and go to Google and see what your ads are. And if there right. are ads for concrete, 
somebody's doing a dirty bit of cheating. Well, and, and I would yeah. also add to the suspect list the uh, the the uh, in home assistance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From well, you know, here's the thing with the one who starts with A, who I won't say out loud, otherwise I'm going to get you know all sorts of suggestions. Um, you can actually go to uh, Amazon and listen to all of the recordings that they have made. And they're all wow. just, you know, based on they, they happen when you say the keyword. Uh, and then they only, it only listens for, you know, a couple of seconds until it finds a phrase. But those are all saved there and you can delete them and you can tell the one who starts with A, delete all of my recordings. And wow. she will delete them. And I have tested it. And you can go there and they're all gone. Now, they're they're gone to me. Are they gone forever? I don't know. Nah. But there are some that are unintelligible. Like, you know, she thought you said the keyword. And then there's this unintelligible blanter for five seconds. Mm-hmm. So there are those that are up there that, you know, Blanter being a good example of unintelligible words. Absolutely. <laughs> I just made that up. Free Blanter. of charge for all my friends. using that word all the time now. Blanter. Blanter. Blather. Blasker. All right, guys. I think that's a show, right? Yes, yep. sir. I think that's all that's happened this week. All right. The less, the less we have to talk about, the safer everyone is. That's right. Remember to patch. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, what else? Don't take Minimize any wood. Minimize the attack surface. Don't take yeah. any wood nickels. All right, we'll Not see you next week. Not as catchy. <laughs> Don't Thanks, take guys. any wood Bye. nickels. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>